Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the Soft Key Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description listing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 203. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. First up, we have a very brief team dig from James Dunn, Saint of Streets, and Paul Cheer. Win games backslash unclassified backslash pumpkin. So I'm guessing this might be like Halloween themed or something to do with pumpkins. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's just a recipe for pumpkin pie or something. Uh, we have a very small 15.7 kilobyte executable and a text file. Uh, that's not good. Okay. Desktop pumpkin. I can pronounce words. Desktop Pumpkin version 1.1. Copyright toggle. Boo. This is just going to be a desktop pumpkin thing, isn't it? Oh boy. Desktop Pumpkin gives your Windows desktop a bit of spirit for the coming Halloween. You may want to try out its companion program. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. This is literally just going to be an icon. It blinks. <laughs> That's it. That's all this thing is. It doesn't. It doesn't do anything. It does nothing. It is. It blinks. That's all it does. Well, this is a short dig. Um, I guess everybody's gonna get another one because it's, it's just a freaking pumpkin. I swear, I should start, like, blacklisting the Toggle Boolean stuff or something. Or just get it all out in one video or something. Jeez. So, since that went so quick, everybody's gonna get another dig. So, James Dunn dug up Wind Games backslash MS backslash Bang 20. Not quite sure what to expect with this one. I'm guessing possibly either a version of the board game Go- Well, no, if it was a board game, it probably would have been in here, right? Well, and this isn't, <laughs> the Windows section isn't organized as well as the DOS section. That's why there's all these extra folders. But anyways, um, got a help file. Bang Gren? Bang Gun? I well, got some WAV files, so it's probably going to be some kind of, um, shooting game. Hi folks, this is the update for Windows 3.1 of the famous Bang 1.0. Famous, huh? <laughs> Copy all files except this readme into your Windows directory and start... Into your Windows directory? That's really bad advice. You should not be putting random games into your Windows directory. Holy jeez. What's the help file say? Um, well, I got a picture of a smiley face, sort of? Huh. Okay, the program the world was waiting for. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh boy. This is the Spring 92 edition, famous Win Wind Doom Tool Bang. <laughs> Wind Doom. I suspect this has nothing to do with Doom. Especially since it came out in 92. Doom came out in 93. Um, I'm going to skip the installation because that was stupid. Um, usage. By clicking the Bang icon, you get the main selection menu. Choose or store. To activate the Death to Mickey soft window? What? Wait, it just occurred to me that this is another icon based program, but at least this is gonna do more than the freaking pumpkin from the looks of it. And I'm almost scared to see what the um, <laughs> registration is, or if it even has registration. Um, it says all source codes available. Though it doesn't say like any prices or anything, so maybe it's freeware. So we actually have not one, not two, but three people to blame for this program with really old email addresses. But yeah, it looks like this is probably freeware. And of course it's um doing some jokes with the credits here. Apparently the stunts were done by these computers. No human casualties. Okay, well, I guess we guess we should just run this thing and see what happens. 
Uh, apparently, I created a death to Mickey Soft icon. I've no idea what that's about, but um, <laughs> and of course it can't open the help file because it's probably looking in the Windows folder for it, like it shouldn't. Um, about about. I love Mickey Soft's Windoom because of its speed, economical usage of RAM, and hard disk capacity, and the absolute lack of system crashes. To all English-speaking users, we urgently need some better puns with the words Microsoft and Windows. If you know some, please send them to one of our email addresses. Why does it keep talking about Windoom? Like, I mean, was there something that existed before Doom that was called Windoom? So seriously, what the heck does this thing do? I mean, it's got these, um... Oh, you have to actually put in the path to where all the sound effects are? Seriously? Oh, boy. So, we've got a statistics thing here. Um... So apparently we can throw grenades and shoot stuff? Yeah, I'm not entirely certain what this is doing. Okay, so apparently what we're supposed to do is click the restore button. And that brings up this thing. Okay. So now we can basically just shoot machine gun shots everywhere. <laughs> right mouse button is a grenade. <laughs> okay. You only have one grenade going at a time, unfortunately. And then if you right double click. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> that was the same line from Terminator, but upsped so that it sounded more. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. And apparently there's a rip Windows <laughs> tombstone here. Uh. See, so yeah, apparently we, we have gone back to Windows. Okay, so yeah, it just didn't clear the desktop or anything. So yeah, this is another really stupid time-wasting program, just like the pumpkin thing. Well, the pumpkin thing doesn't even waste your time because it doesn't do anything. It just sits there. It just sits there. And it's not even blinking because of this nonsense going on where we're just drawing to the desktop in a sense. So yeah, that was Bang 2.0, or Death to Mickey Soft, or I don't... <laughs> I don't know. This thing is just stupid. Next up, Saint of Streets dug up win games backslash comp backslash cypher 3. Well, I'm gonna guess some kind of puzzle game, where you're trying to de decode something. Um, where is it? Where... there it is. Cypher 3. So cipher 30.dat exe and a help. So load up the help. So cipher 3.0 by Brad Trupp. I got that right. T R U P P. So it is a shareware game. Please register. Um, okay, yeah. So it does look like one of these um, decode the words thing sort of things. And how much does he want for it? So, he wants... Oh! <laughs> Just send a put picture postcard of your town or city. <laughs> and that's all you have to do. Or you can also alternatively register for $10 to receive the newest version, plus other stuff. Oh, the guy's Canadian. Well, he says right here that since he started asking for the postcard registration, that he'd received a great deal more post postcards than he expected. So, I guess some people were purchasing stuff like this. So, like, I mean, we call it shovelware because very few people know about it. But the fact of the matter is, some people did indeed find the, this kind of stuff and play it and spend money on it. So, even though it wasn't wildly successful, it wasn't 100% unknown. A lot of this software, some people did encounter it and legitimately enjoy it. But in any case, let's actually try running this one. So, Cypher 3.0. 
Okay, well, right off the bat, I have no idea what this is supposed to be in terms of phrasing. Um, why is show correct? Oh, it probably let, lets you, um, probably indicates when the letter is particularly correct or something. Okay. So, we can also specify the starting puzzle. Um, how many are there is the question. Oh, wow. I punched in a 99 and didn't expect results. Um, what about 999? Uh, I don't think there could be this many puzzles, could there? Like, it, it, surely it's just loot. That's a 152 kilobyte data file. Okay, so the number of puzzles in this program is 1,400. <laughs> um... Yeah, I don't think we're going to be running out of them anytime soon. <laughs> wow, I wasn't expecting that many. <laughs> I don't think anybody would have been. Okay, so specify starting puzzle. We'll go back to one, because this one was pretty big. Well, that's, <laughs> that's hilarious. It randomized the T into the correct position. So I'm going to guess the N's are H's. So how do I do this? Do I just click the letter and then click where I want it to go? Yeah. Um, I'm going to guess the A is here. And then what other words can we figure out here? I'm going to guess this word here is every. So V for the Q. That was, that was right. So definitely got that one right. I have to say I'm not a fan of the color scheme here. Like the gray and the white and this huge block of red. Like, it, it works, but I kind of wish it was a little more, a little less contrasted, like, with all the boxes and everything. Like, if the borders around the boxes were not as, um, not as defined, so that the text could stand out better. And one letter left, because there's only a single K in this entire puzzle. Okay, and it actually does print the whole thing afterwards. So apparently this puzzle was, Friendship is constant in all other things, save in the office and affairs of love. Therefore, all hearts in love use their own tongues. Let every eye negotiate for itself and trust no agent. Shakespeare, much ado about nothing. Okay, so the after the hyphen part there is where the quote comes from. Okay, then it moves on to the next puzzle. Now what happens if I actually go back to the puzzle that I was just on? Okay, so with that many puzzles and the fact that there's no um, there's no randomization here, like it'd be nice if it could actually keep track of which puzzles you've solved. Because with 1,400 puzzles, you're gonna lose track unless you go in order. So, I mean, I guess it's not that big a deal, but having a randomization option to randomly select which puzzle you're doing and also being able to see which ones you've cleared would definitely make the program even better. But, like, I mean, as it stands, it does work perfectly fine. Um, let's just pick some random number. Uh, what's a good number? Well, this is the 203rd week of Shoveler Digger, so let's do 203. Okay, a much smaller puzzle, so this might be a little trickier to figure out. Except we've got three two-letter words in a row. <laughs> um, that doesn't happen often. Oh, also the H and the N have already been randomized to be those characters. Like, that's kind of weird, too, that it would the randomization would actually put proper letters in their actual place. Although that is an option we can turn off. We can turn off the show correct letters, and now you don't actually know if a letter is correct or not. So you have to sort of go by your own wits as you're figuring it out. Like, I'm trying to think of combinations of two letter, three two letter words, which all have different letters. Think I'm making progress here? I think. Because we knew that H was there just from the way the puzzle started. And if I put the O and the W there, uh, hmm. Okay, I've got how would you so far, and it also starts with you. 
Now this Y has to be correct for sure. Same with this O. That's presuming this is right with the these words here. I'm trying to think what other words could go here. Well, like, I mean, that has to be an M there, doesn't it? Because, like, I mean, there's not a lot of two-letter words that end with Y. <laughs> mm, the AS here, I think that's actually B. Because to be my ma makes sense here, right? But where does that leave us? How would you like? So should that, should that be I there and then K here? How would you like to be my something? You need constant medical attention. How would you like to be my caddy? Doctor something cartoon. Oh, it's probably a Q. Yep. You need constant medical attention. How would you like to be my caddy? Dr. Quintana cartoon. Okay, that was tricky. <laughs> so yeah, that was Cypher 3.0. For the cost of a postcard or $10, this has a lot of content, that's for sure. And lastly, Paul Shear dug up wingames backslash gg backslash lava. I swear, if this is just a lava lamp program or something like that, I'm going to be very disappointed. <laughs> Oh, this doesn't bode well. Well, we've got a text file here. It says, this file, lava program, which always remains iconic, a tiny lava lamp appears on your desktop. <laughs> That's all it is. All it is is a tiny lava lamp. You can go next to the pumpkin. Next! Let's try that again. And lastly, Paul Shear has dug up win games backslash unclassified backslash skulls. At this rate, I'm half expecting just a skull icon for the desktop, because that seems to be all we're good for today is desktop wastes of space. <laughs> uh, what am I looking for again? Skulls? Where are they? Um, well, there's souls, but no, we want skulls. Oh, well, this is a considerably larger executable, so that's a good sign. <laughs> um, oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> no! Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Um, Amazon Skulls is based on a game that was reportedly played by the members of an ancient Brazilian tribe. In this game, each player takes their turn playing a skull down on the plane... Okay, that's worded weird. Takes their turn playing a skull down on the playing board. The skull must be placed on the grid so that it borders the last skull played but not any other. As the game progresses, the line of skulls develops. The winner is the one who makes the last valid move. Okay. Oh, in the original game, the loser was required to donate his head to the collection of playing pieces. Uh, right. So Toggle Booleans actually did make something other than icons. Because <laughs> this is actually a game. Although that's cool, it actually has um different grid sizes too. So we can do 8x8, 12x12. Um, what's Pit of Death? Oh, it has the middle section removed. Oh, and that's 5x6, five not 5x5. Five five. Okay. And we can also play with happy faces. Just in case skulls are too metal. Um, we got different skill settings. So, I guess new game. So, what do I do? I just place a skull. And then place this. Where do I. How does this work? Okay. Okay, I reread the rules there. So it has to border a skull that was played, but can't touch any other skull. So I can't p make a move here because it would touch that skull. So it has to go there. And now here I can move there, either there or there. So if I go there... Now here's the trick. If I put a skull here, then he can't make a move, which means... I don't know, the winner's the one who makes the last valid move. So if I move there, okay, so that means I win then. Okay. So yeah, if I put the skull here now, he's going to win. 
because he'll put a skull here and then I won't have a move. So I have to put it here. Oh, well that didn't work either. <laughs> so I'm not gonna be too, too cautious of where I'm putting my pieces for the start here, because a big board. Get a little more cautious at this point. So if I put it here, then he can put it here or here. Both are fine. Oh wait, both aren't fine because now I... <laughs> nope. That's a loss. Okay, let me, th let me think about this a second. Um, okay, here should be fine. So I can't put it there or there, so I have to put it there. I have to put it there. If I put it here, then he has to put it here, but then I don't have a move. So I have to go there. And he's going to win, because when I put it here, he's going to put one there, and then I don't have a move. Nope. So yeah, that was Amazon Skulls. So it looks like Toggle Boolean actually does make a few things other than just wastes of space on the desktop. <laughs> so yeah, I guess I can't blacklist them, can I? Hmm.